Happy Sabbath, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I always feel uh, like my part is in the service is a bit superfluous after being blessed by uh, the music uh, that we've had today. I just it's been tremendous. So thank you to all those that have had a part of it. And uh, I've got a pop tart story too, Mark. I'll tell you sometime. Uh, let us uh, pray this morning. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you in our great need and desirous of receiving from you that which we do not have and only you can give. Uh, Lord, we are sinners in need of grace. We are confused in need of direction. We are lost and you know the way. So we come to the way, the truth, and the life this morning and plead for the presence of Jesus uh, that brings every good and perfect gift with him. So thank you for hearing our prayer, for uh, blessing us with the Holy Spirit. We thank you for, for being among us today. In your name we pray, amen. <clears throat> I just wanted to share a little bit with you. Some of you know, and I've, I've talked to some of you about... Uh, uh, what I did last week, I went with, uh, how'd you figure out how that worked? It's not going. <laughs> it's not going. So uh, I went last week up to uh, uh, Paradise, California. How many of you have friends or family in the Paradise area? Yeah, some of you do. Um, I was able to uh, go with uh, Pastor Eric Vandenberg. Some of you remember uh, Pastor Eric. And we went up on uh, on Monday and uh, worked there for a week. Um, most of you know uh, the Paradise uh, uh, Camp Fire. It wasn't a campfire. It was called the Camp Fire, <laughs> and uh, it kind of swept through the uh, through the little town there. Um, started early in the morning, um, or probably around 7:30, and they think that it was probably some electrical lines that were sparking uh, because they had a high winds, 40, 50 mile an hour winds, and uh, the the uh, sparks got into the grass, it was very dry there, and uh, just uh, took off, and fueled by that uh, that wind, uh, just swept over the, uh, the little town there, and the surrounding areas. Um, you can't really see on, on that uh, little map, but it says there's a, there's a time frame up, up at the top, and the fire started uh, down in the, the blue area, down by the highway on the left. And by 10 o'clock in the morning, it was already, uh, it started around 7.30. And by 10 o'clock, it had, it had followed the blue area across. And by 8 p.m. that evening, uh, most of the town was in flames. And uh, some of you have heard the stories of, of people trying to escape the, the roads being clogged. And uh, <clears throat> if you get a chance, uh, go and listen to uh, Pastor Steve Hamilton uh, tell the story of his escape. Pastor Steve Hamilton was the youth director for the Rocky Mountain Conference for the last six years. And about two months ago, uh, two and a half to three months ago, he took a call. He decided he wanted to get back into pastoring. And so he went to the, uh, the Paradise Seventh-day Adventist Church in Paradise, California. Uh, rented a home there, and uh, Pastor Steve uh, is, uh, some of you might have gone to Yavapines when Pastor Steve came and helped Eric out there. He's into off-roading and, and, and climb, climbing. He builds rock crawlers and, uh, and, and enjoys teaching kids all about the joys of off-roading. Well, he had been in paradise for three weeks uh, when, the, when the fire came over, and he lost his home. Uh, as the pastor of the church there, the assistant pastor lost his home, the treasurer lost her home, the church clerk lost her home. Um, many people lost their homes. They, uh, one, I think one church member, uh, perished in the flames. Um, and, uh, the hospital, the Adventist hospital that is there, uh, about 40% of the, I think 30 to 40% of the hospital was burned. The academy, Paradise Academy, Adventist Academy was burned to the ground. Uh, Paradise Church was burned to the ground. Uh, 1,200 member church, large church, beautiful church. 
Um, part of the grade school was burned to the ground. Many businesses, um, I think about 7,000 homes and 52,000 people were displaced. But uh, um, Pastor Steve talks about uh, uh, many people were, were sitting down to eat breakfast and no warning, no, no uh, alarms went off. They just looked outside and noticed that, oh, oh honey, the trees on, outside are on fire. <laughs> Uh, and at that point, uh, if you've lived in a forested area, you know it's time to get out and get out in a hurry. And so people rushed to their cars. Uh, one man, I heard the story, went around. He lived in a retirement neighborhood. Many people retired. Lots of Adventist pastors there retired. All the Adventist pastors, retired Adventist pastors, lost their homes. Every one. <laughs> so uh, I, I, that, that is a, a warning to me to never retire. <laughs> so... <laughs> um, so anyway, paradise turned into uh, the opposite of paradise, if you know what I'm talking about. That, that people tried to, uh, to escape, and uh, the roads were clogged. People ended up having to jump out of their cars and run uh, to, uh, for their lives, and their shoes melting to the pavement, uh, their cars burning. Uh, many, many of the people that died, I think they, the, the count is up to about uh, 90 or so folks that, that lost their lives. Many of them were in their cars trying to escape. Um, uh, you can see whole neighborhoods. This is a, a retirement communities. The fire was pretty merciless. It uh, it, it devoured. Uh, going a little too fast there, brother. <laughs> devoured homes and uh, mobile homes and and beautiful homes alike. Uh, many people displaced. Uh, outside of the Walmart was a, a tent city, uh, pretty much. And uh, when we when we flew in on on Monday, it was a beautiful day Monday morning. But by Monday evening, the rain it started raining, and by Tuesday the winds were howling again. And and if you can imagine living in a tent with 40 50 mile an hour winds and rain, uh, it was uh, it was incredibly miserable. And uh, uh, so we we uh, spent a lot of time there. A lot of people had donated RVs. Um, and they they said here just take take my camper I'm not using it take my fifth wheel take and uh, so there was a physician uh, there uh, not a physician but an optometrist that had a, a large parcel of land and the fire had literally burned up to his fence line and stopped there and he was so grateful uh, to the Lord that uh, he asked if uh, you know what can what can we do to help. And uh, so they, they had a, a, a barn and a well, and so he brought in a lot of gravel and poured a, poured a circular road, and they took all of these donated RVs and they just lined them up there. And uh, uh, part of what Pastor uh, Vandenberg and another pastor and myself uh, did was to uh, uh, put in septic lines and water lines and uh, got generators and got everybody hooked up. We built porches. Uh, for for the people because it was uh, pretty muddy and uh, and so we did that all out in this pasture that used to be a pasture but then it became the became the mobile home park and and people that were displaced came and and had a place to stay uh, we set up a, a big kitchen uh, inside of a large army tent uh, uh, the U.S. Army had donated uh, 200 large tents and. Uh, and so they, they had set up uh, four or five of those out there. And so we set up one as a kitchen. We put tables and chairs and, a, and sink and a, a little cooking area and some shelves. And the wind was actually blowing so hard while we were setting that up that, that I, got I got too close to the side of the tent. The tent blew out and then it came back and, and literally knocked me across the room, knocked our shelf over. Uh, but those tents, the U.S. Army, they know how to make tents, brother. So uh, uh, the tent did not fall down. <laughs> uh, uh, when we arrived, uh, the whole Paradise Church and Academy and the school had moved down to the Chico Church. How many of you are familiar with Chico, California? Beautiful area. It's another large Adventist church with its own academy and gym. And they just opened their arms uh, to the Paradise School and Church. And they said, come take over. And and so uh, the, uh, the the past, the the principal of the school there his name is Monty Nystrom. Some of you might might know the uh, some of the Nystrom family. Um, but Monty was the principal is the principal, and he moved his his principal's office became the was the the greeter and deacon's room at, at the Chico Church, 
And uh, somebody had donated a large number of backpacks with uh, school supplies and things like that for all the kids. And so the first thing that we did when we got there was we unpacked all of those backpacks and we stuffed them with pencils and, and paper and, and uh, toothbrushes and toothpaste and all those things that, uh, that uh, uh, kids need. And it was real gratifying to see uh, large groups of kids walking around with the backpacks that, that we had done. Um, go ahead and go to the next one. Uh, the, the kindergartners, of course, got the colored backpacks, the, 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 the uh, fancy backpacks, and they also got little penguin hats. So I thought uh, you needed to see the penguin hat that the Paradise uh, Kindergarten kids are all wearing around. So um, here's a picture of our uh, mobile home park. Uh, the gravel, of course, is freshly laid. We brought out, uh, had porta potties brought out uh, so that it wouldn't overload the, the system. and and uh, here's, uh, I think the next one is a picture of us. Uh, uh, some of you know Dr. Uh, Joylo Barbosa. He's the smiling guy in the middle. Uh, he was our member here for a while, now lives in Lake Havasu. And uh, Eric on the left and, and yours truly on the right, uh, uh, hooking up the water line. We put in a, uh, a pressure gauge uh, in the water line so it wouldn't blow out all the, uh, um, the RV uh, hoses. So. And it's amazing how much better it is when you actually put the pressure line back in the right way. So we had to take it off and turn it around. And, and so that's kind of why we have the dumb, dumb grins on our faces because we kind of made a mistake there. Uh, you can see uh, here's the field and, and uh, of course the mountain is burned and to the right is the, is the, the house of the, of the optometrist that owned all this property right here. Um, next slide is... Uh, is a picture of the inside of the of the army tent there, all the tables and chairs, and in the back of the of the tent is the uh, uh, kitchen area that we set up and some shelves and so forth. And people were donating food and clothes, and and it became kind of a center, of, uh, a donation center that that people could could uh, make use of when they needed things. Um, it was also very rainy and and cold, and the mud was just unbelievably sticky. So we went to uh, Home Depot. And they were kind enough to uh, uh, give us a bunch of pallets and donated probably two, three thousand dollars worth of wood. And uh, so we laid down the pallets and we just screwed uh, two by sixes in top of the pallets to make a uh, uh, makeshift porch uh, to help people to stay out of the mud and keep their keep their RVs a little bit cleaner. And uh, so there there was 50 of those porches that that we put together. And in the back, you, you can see uh, uh, the sewer line uh, that we uh, put in being laid. Uh, this is a, a shower trailer, um, is, which is pretty interesting. Uh, if you've ever been to a Pathfinder Camperie, you know what a shower trailer is. That's a, um, but uh, it's a trailer that has four separate showers. And we hook that up, and uh, those big propane paint tanks uh, uh, hold about, uh, I think they're 60-gallon tanks. and. We got three of those. We set up a, a light post outside and, and wired that up so that the, uh, the people could have light um, because it's pretty much dark over there by, you know, 5, 5.30 this time of year. And uh, so we installed that and uh, got it ready to go. Um, ran into this couple. They recognized me. Uh, I didn't recognize them because the last time I had seen them, they were not grown up yet. Um, this, this is Tom... Um, Tom Maycomer's kids. Some of you know Tom. He's an attorney from the Paradise Valley Church, Tom and, and Shelley. And these are, this is Tom's kids, uh, Forrest, uh, we call him Rory, and Maddie, their brother and sister. And uh, Maddie had been teaching at the Paradise School for three years, and uh, her brother Rory, uh, she said, hey, come teach at the school. It's really cool. You can live with me. And so uh, Rory had just come and started teaching at the Paradise Academy as well, teaching the scientists, uh, sciences there, and, uh, and they were one of the, the ones that, that lost their homes. Most of the staff, I think all of the staff at the, at the Academy lost their homes. Um, but do you notice something about, what are these, do these look like people that have just lost their homes? <laughs> you know, the amazing thing about... Uh, about, uh, there was a slide, a few slides back. Can you go back until I tell you I forgot to talk about that one? Keep going, keep going, keep going. It's, uh, it was inside of, uh, of a Home Depot. Um, 
A couple more, a couple more. Right there, stop there. Do you know what those are? They're screens. They're sifters. A Home Depot uh, was giving these to people uh, to take up to the ruins of their home so they could shovel through the ashes and sift out uh, and maybe find grandma's ring or or their stash of Krugerrands or whatever it might be uh, that that were buried in the ashes of their homes because there weren't any, I didn't see any homes that were partially burnt. They were all either standing or they were just completely burnt to the ground. Um, the difference between, you know, people that were carrying those around had in, in Home Depot and the, and the difference between them and the people that I saw at the Chico Church was just astounding. People walking around in town, and there were thousands of them, uh, with glum expressions, tears. Um, people at the Chico, people at the Paradise Church, at the Chico Church, uh, it was different. There was, a, there was hope. There was hope in their, in their eyes and joy. And even though they had gone through this incredible thing that they had gone through, and there were tears, there was crying, but there was joy. There was a deep inner joy. And I thought, what a difference. What a difference. What is it that, that makes that difference in people's lives? Now you can uh, flip back through. I'd forgotten to talk about that. But um, I want us to look at this text here because I believe that this is where we find the difference. And let's read it. It's in 2 Corinthians chapter five, uh, 4 and verses 7 through 11. It says, uh, we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. Do you think that's the secret? What is the power of having joy when you lose everything? What power, what's the power of having hope when you ha literally have nothing whatsoever to, to, and you don't know where your next meal is coming? It's very interesting. Uh, uh, the, the Paradise Church was... They were receiving lots of donations and uh, and uh, um, it was going into the bank and 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 but the donations were not being uh, had, had were not being distributed. And somebody called and says, hey, I donated this, you know, and, and they said, well, you know, we uh, it and they said, well, why don't you just write checks to everybody? And the poor the poor church treasurer, she said, but because all the checks in the church burned up, we don't even have checks to, to write checks. So there's there's little you know things like that that happen. But what what? How do people keep the joy in their heart? How do people keep the 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 hope and the peace when everything is gone? Everything is gone. You know, I'm told uh, uh, Pastor Steve didn't have renter's insurance in place yet. <laughs> when the fire came, uh, some of you might have seen his 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 story. Uh, he had gone to the grocery store or somewhere. He was not at the house, but he heard the news and saw, and saw the fire coming up the hill. And so he called his wife. He has a 12-year-old daughter and a, uh, I think a 10-year-old son. I can't remember uh, exactly. But, he, but he, uh, he, he called his wife and he says, Honey, put, put the kids in one... Put, put, you go get in one Jeep, get the dog, get the kids, and, and uh, have... Uh, I think it's, uh, I can't remember the, the little girl's name now, and, but she's 12 years old. He said, have her drive the other Jeep. <laughs> so he is driving one Jeep, his wife is driving the other, and the 12-year-old uh, girl is driving the other Jeep. <laughs> Start them young, folks. That's <laughs> Teach them to drive. <laughs> so uh, he said, honey, if the police try to stop you, just keep on going. So... So sure enough that, you know, there was this poor, one poor traffic cops trying to direct all this traffic that's pouring down the hill and, uh, and uh, saw this, this little girl, <laughs> cute little girl driving the Jeep and tried to wave her over and she just kept on going. So um, one of the good stories that came out, Lee and Margie Venden's daughter, some of you know Lee and Margie, uh, their daughter was an employee at the Feather River, Feather River Hospital there. And she was one of the ones that just barely escaped with her life. Had that, that she was actually on the phone with, with Pastor Lee and Margie. And uh, she was crying and, and the flames were all around them. If you've seen any of these things, it's just uh, unbelievable 
uh, what, the, what these people went to, through. And she had to jump out of her car and literally run for her life uh, while she was on the phone with her parents. What is it that keeps people happy even though uh, things are going on around them like that? We are hard-pressed on every side, Paul says, but not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always caring about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our body. What are they carrying? What's he carrying around inside of him? Jesus. Carrying Jesus inside of him. Jars of clay. Anybody like Jars of Clay? <laughs> it's a good band, isn't it? Jars of Clay. Uh, some, some of your versions might say earthen vessels. Uh, we have this treasure in Jars of Clay. Um, we don't use clay jars too much in America here. I, I think we have a little clay uh, thing that we roast garlic in. I love roasted garlic. Got to have my roasted garlic. So sometimes we... We put some garlic in our little clay pot and some little bit of olive oil and some salt and pepper and put that in the oven and roast their garlic. Um, but most of the time we don't use clay uh, pots in America. Um, they're used by a lot of uh, poorer folks around the world. I remember when we were in India uh, doing evangelistic series in India, um, the, uh, the people would, would cook their rice and their chilies and their peanuts, which they had twice a day. That was their meal in a little uh, clay pot outside of their home. And the, uh, uh, you know, they told us, don't eat the food. When you go to, out in the villages, it, don't, don't eat the, the food and because it, it, it could make you sick. And so when we went to these, this little sh uh, shanty of a house, to meet with a, the Bible worker there, and we, and we were at this little shanty, and they cooked peanuts and rice and chilies. And they said, here, pastor, share our meal with us. Do you think I ate it? I sure did. And it was delicious. <laughs> but it was cooked in a little clay pot. And, but when the clay pot is broken, it's thrown out. Uh, clay is easily broken. Clay pots, clay jars, jars of clay, they're very fragile. They're, they crack easily. They break easily. Um, once they're broken, they're useless and they're thrown out into the dump. At least that's what the world does with people sometimes. You know, people are easily broken. People are fragile. Um, and when people are broken, when you're, when you're broken as an individual, what does the world do with you? It throws you out. You're useless. The world admires that which is expensive and beautiful and strong and talented and, and so forth. And if you don't meet that criteria, then you are marginalized as a human being. You're treated like a, a broken clay pot. And I think a lot of people buy into that. A lot of people find their self-worth from what the world thinks is, is worthwhile. But here's the deal. When you're carrying Jesus around inside you, when, when Jesus sees you, He does not see someone who's cracked and someone who's broken and someone who's worthless and someone's to be thrown aside. It doesn't matter what your past is. It doesn't no ma matter what your present is. When Jesus sees you, He sees what you can be in Him. Even a broken, cracked, fragile vessel. When Jesus sees you and I, He sees what we can be in Him. He sees someone that He gave His life to redeem. He sees all that we can be in Him. And He says, if you will let me come into you, then I can make you into something wonderful and beautiful. He offers to live in us. And that's what it means to have this treasure in earthen vessels. We have this treasure, this treasure of Jesus in these fragile, broken, cracked vessels The King and Creator of the universe is willing and eager to live inside of us. And He's the treasure. He is the treasure. We're the earthen vessels. We are the cracked and broken. We are the cast aside. 
We are the useless until Jesus comes in. He takes these cracked, broken, useless vessels and He pours Himself into us. And Jesus is the greatest treasure. We are the jars of clay. You know, people don't usually put their treasures in things that are fragile. People put their treasures in a safe, in a strong, firm, sturdy, solid iron box. If you have, if you have something that you want valuable, do you put it in something that's easily broken? No. You put it in something that is that is uh, strong. You put your you put your in a safe. You put a in a safety deposit box in the bank, or or you might uh, if if you have a lot of gold like like all the pastors do in the conference here, you put it in forced Knox, right? You, if you have a fine house, it might be in a gated community. You don't you don't you don't put things that are valuable to you in something that can be easily broken into or or broken or ruined. You put it in something that's designed to protect what's on the inside of the vessel, right? When you have something valuable, you put it in something that's designed to protect that thing that's valuable. But here's the deal. When Jesus comes into our life, when the Spirit of God enters into a jar of clay, the jar may be cracked, it may be broken, it may be cast aside or useless in the eyes of the world, but when Jesus pours Himself into that cracked and broken vessel, it's what's on the inside of the vessel that protects the outside. It's not what the outside that protects the inside. It's what's on the inside that protects the outside and makes it beautiful and useful. That's the wonderful thing about Jesus. It's the treasure within that protects the fragile vessel without. When Jesus comes into your life, it's like uh, Kintsugi. <laughs> Have you ever seen this uh, 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 clay bowl like this in Japan? Um, in the next slide, there's a, something called Kintsugi, and I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it's also known as golden joinery. Um, known as uh, Kintsuku or uh, something or another blah, 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 that I can't say. Golden repair. It's the Japanese art of repairing broken pottery with a lacquer dusted or mixed with powdered gold, silver, or platinum. A method similar to, uh, to another technique. And the next slide, it tells us uh, Kintsugu is the Japanese art of putting broken pottery pieces back together with gold. Can you imagine a clay pot, something that is so useful uh, or so common as to, as to be thrown away if it gets broken, not even bothered to fix it. You take something that's cheap, something that's fragile, and if it gets broken, you repair it with something as precious as, as gold and platinum. I seem to remember, it sounds like a waste, doesn't it? It sounds like an incredible waste. Why would you put gold in, in clay together? Sometimes God values you remember a story about a, a lady that brought in an alabaster box full of expensive perfume? She broke that perfume. She poured it on the feet of Jesus. Wiped it with her hair. She wasted a whole year's salary on the feet of Jesus. Broken pottery pieces back together with gold. Built on the idea that embracing flaws and imperfections, you can create an even stronger, more beautiful piece of art. Every break is unique, and instead of repairing an item like new, the 400-year-old technique actually highlights the scars as part of the design. Isn't that amazing? It highlights the scars as part of his design. Anybody here got any scars? 
I know a lot of us have some external scars. Uh, one of my, when I go to the, uh, to the kids uh, and do worships, one of the worships that I do is I show them all my scars. Yeah, I got this one from a swing on the back of my head, and, and then the one beside it I got from the same swing because I didn't learn the first time. Then I got this one, and I got that. Oh, man, Pastor Jay, you got lots of scars. Yeah. Manly men, we have scars, right? What about the scars on the inside? Any of you guys got scars on the inside? Every break is unique, and instead of repairing an item like you, the 400-year-old technique actually highlights the scars as part of the design. Using this as a metaphor for healing teaches us an important lesson. Sometimes, in the process of repairing things that are broken, we actually create something more unique, beautiful, and resilient. Let me ask you what Jesus does in your life and in mine. When he comes in to start his healing in your life, he creates something that is more unique, more resilient, and more beautiful than you could ever imagine being without him. The treasure inside the vessel remakes the vessel. There's an old song the, the Gaithers used to sing. It goes like this. If there ever were dreams that were lofty and noble, they were my dreams from the start. And the hopes for life's best were the hopes that I harbored down deep in my heart. But my dreams turned to ashes. My castles all crumbled. My fortune turned to loss. So I wrapped it up in the rags of my life and I laid it at the cross. You know the verse? You know the chorus? Something beautiful. Something good. All my confusion, he understood. All I had to offer him was brokenness and strife. But he made something beautiful out of my life. Because that's what God does with broken people. He makes something beautiful out of your life. If you'll let him. If you'll let him. If you're broken today, if you're a jar of clay, if you're a crack pot he'll make something beautiful let Jesus pour himself into your life ask him say Lord I'm broken confess to him tell him tell him Lord I've messed up I'm broken I'm I'm I'm, I'm worthless please pour yourself into my life and make something beautiful and if you do that Brothers and sisters, the promise is that the treasure, the treasure of Jesus will, will make your jar of clay something beautiful. I'm thankful for that, aren't you? Let's pray. Lord, we are broken. We are damaged. We've been cast aside as useless. But Lord, thank you for looking at us and seeing something beautiful seeing what we can be with you. Thank you for looking at us through the eyes of the cross. Thank you for, for your precious blood. The Bible says we're not redeemed with, with earthly things like silver or gold, but we're redeemed with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you for being the thing in us that holds us together when we're falling apart. Lord, bless us. Bless this congregation. Bless each family, each person here. Pour yourself into us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Prayer request or praise report, please come before the throne. Lord. Hello. Hello. That works. Much better.
I was waiting for the music. <laughs> it was kind of weird. <laughs> Sorry. Father God, we come before you, broken vessels, Lord, be before a mighty God who loves us, who fills us with the treasure of Jesus. Lord, there's people before, before you today, Lord, uh, with requests. We're all broken in some way. Lord, we know you can complete us, that you can make us better. I pray for those that have come before here, Lord, um, with struggles that they would bring before you, Lord. I pray for people who have financial difficulties this time of year, illness, lost jobs. Lord, whatever the need may be, you can fill that need. Lord, there's people with broken families, children that have, have left you, Lord drugs, all kinds of all kinds of things, sinful things of this world that have taken us captive in our families and our friends. Lord, we, we just we ask that you heal us, that you heal our families, our friends, our community, Lord. We know that you're coming soon, and we just pray, Lord, that uh, we do as much for you that we can before you come and that we reach as much people for you, Lord. Please just heal our broken hearts. Help us to be vessels shining through your, your grace, your glory, Lord, leading people to Jesus. Lord, we have re, uh, blessings that you've provided this time of year and, and throughout the year. We thank you for those blessings of health and home and, and, and just all the different things that you have provided for our, our every needs, and we thank you for that as well, Father. Please go with each and every one as they leave today. And uh, help us to remember the true reason for the season is Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand for our closing hymn, please. see the pot I saw the gold that's where my eyes went right is that where your eyes went that's the way it should be with us right let's pray Lord Jesus please come into our lives Lord and as the old song says uh, may people look at us and see only Christ living in us Lord what a message we have that Jesus can heal the brokenhearted that he can put lives back together that he can make things new again uh, Lord, we commit our hearts and our lives to you today, and we thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.